Welcome to Tech World with Preet. In this video, we are diving into the top 10 interview questions and answers on RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. Whether you're prepping for a generate AI role or building next-gen AI apps, this will give you the edge you need. Let us start with the basics. What is RAG? RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation, a powerful hybrid approach where an LLM retrieves external documents and then generates a grounded factual response. It's a game changer in reducing hallucinations. The next question is, how does RAG work? Here's how it works. Your query is first embedded, then relevant documents are retrieved based on similarity. These documents are passed as context to the generator, which then produces a factually enriched answer. The next question is, what are key components of a RAG pipeline? The RAG pipeline is a powerful architecture that combines information retrieval with text generation to improve accuracy and reduce hallucinations in language models. Here's how it works, step by step. Step 1 is Document Chunker. We begin by splitting large documents like PDFs, reports or manuals into smaller meaningful text chunks. This is crucial because large language models can only process a limited number of tokens at once. Step 2 is Embedding Model. Each chunk is then converted into a dense vector using an embedding model. This vector represents the semantic meaning of the text, allowing us to perform similarity-based searches later. Step 3 is Vector Database All the vectorized chunks are stored in a vector database like FAS, Pinecone or Chroma. This acts as a searchable memory for a knowledge base. Step 4 is Retriever. When a user asks a question, we embed the query and search the vector database to retrieve the most relevant document chunks. This retrieval step ensures the LLM gets only focused, high-quality context. Step 5 is Generator Model. Finally, we pass the retrieved chunks along with the original query to a language model like GPT. The model reads the context and generates a grounded informative response minimizing hallucinations and boosting reliability. So to summarize chunk next embed then store then retrieve and finally generate. That's the RH pipeline in action. Simple, scalable and incredibly powerful for enterprise grade Gen AI solutions. The next question is related to what is an embedding model? What are some popular embedding models? How to choose the right embedding model? Let us summarize again. Embedding models. An embedding model transforms text into a dense vector, a fixed length numerical representation. These vectors capture semantic meaning, so similar sentences have similar vectors. Coming to the next section, the popular embedding models are first one is one. Open AI said it, embedding model. It can be used for general purpose semantic search, regi, classification, clustering. It is popular because it provides high quality embeddings, it is scalable and fast. It is continuously improved. The second is sentence transformers. It is popular because it is open source and free. It is easy to fine tune. It is optimized for sentence similarity, clustering, semantic search. The third one is BioBert. It is used in healthcare and biomedical domain domain. Healthcare biomedical embeddings capture medical terminology and relationships better than general models. Fourth one is legal bird domain. Legal and regulator to text it understands legal syntax and semantics and performs better than general models on legal document retrieval and summarization. So now that we know about the popular embedding models, let's talk about how to choose the right one based on your use case. For general purpose retrieval augmented generation, go with OpenAI's Ada model or MiniLM from Sentence Transformers. These offer a great balance between speed and quality, and they work well across most industries. If you need low latency or want to run on mobile or edge devices, Use Mini LM or Distilbert based models, they are lightweight, fast and perfect for real-time applications. Working with legal documents, Legalbert is the way to go. 
it's been trained on court decisions contracts and legal texts so it understands legal language much better than general models for healthcare and medical applications biobird is your best choice it's been trained on biomedical literature like pubmed so it captures medical terminology very accurately and finally if your priority is high accuracy especially for search or document matching use mpnet or open ai's let's discuss the next questions what is a vector database why not use a traditional database what are popular vector databases a vector database stores and searches embeddings numerical representations of data in generative ai it helps retrieve the most relevant information fast so the language model can generate accurate answers why not use a traditional database traditional databases like sql or no sql store and query structured data using exact matches or filters but embeddings are floating point vectors often hundreds of dimensions and we need to search by semantic similarity not exact match that's where vector databases come in they use algorithms like approximate nearest neighbor ann search to quickly find the top k most similar vectors popular vector databases let's now take a look at some of the most popular vector databases used in generative ai and retrieval augmented generation systems first up is face developed by facebook ai research it's open source blazing fast and perfect for local experiments or prototyping if you're just getting started or building a lightweight solution face is a great choice Next is Pinecone, a fully managed cloud solution. It's designed for production scale use with real-time indexing and advanced metadata filtering. If you want something scalable and enterprise ready, Pinecone is one of the top industry picks. Wave 8 is another powerful option that comes in both managed and self-hosted versions. What makes it unique is its hybrid search capability. It supports both vector similarity and keyword-based filtering. It also offers a user-friendly GraphQL interface and integrates easily with Hugging Face models. Then we have Quadrant, which is open source with a cloud option too. It's known for strong filtering support, REST and gRPC APIs, and easy deployment. It's especially good if you need GPU acceleration or fine-grained control over search behavior. And finally, Chroma DB. It's lightweight, easy to use locally, and very popular in the LangChain and RagDemo community. If you're building quick proofs of concept or educational projects, Chroma is fast and flexible. Each of these tools has its strengths. So the best choice depends on your project scale, complexity and deployment needs. Next interview topic is what is fine tuning? What is difference between regex and fine tuning when to use what? Coming back to fine tuning. Fine tuning is the process of training a pre-trained model like GPT on your specific data to specialize it for a domain. It requires labeled data compute resources and time to retrain the model but it has limitations it's expensive static and slow to update plus the model can forget general knowledge during retraining let's compare fine tuning and regex across key features update speed fine tuning is slow since it needs retraining every time you add new data regex is fast you just update the database no need to retrain the model flexibility fine tuned models are static and hard to change regex is highly flexible and supports real time updates to your knowledge base cost fine tuning is costly due to compute and training time regex is much cheaper since the model stays frozen and only the data layer changes hallucination fine tuned models may hallucinate especially with limited data Regi reduces hallucinations by retrieving grounded external content before generating responses. Scalability, fine tuning doesn't scale well across multiple domains. Regi is easy to scale. You can add more data sources without retraining the model. This can give us the summarization for when to use what, 
Use fine tuning when you have a very specific task, for example, legal clause classification. You have high quality label data. You want the model to internalize domain language patterns. Use regic when minus your knowledge base changes frequently. You want fast low cost updates. You need factual answers based on external documents. Can you explain some real world use cases where retrieval augmented generation regi provides a significant advantage over traditional LLM setups? Absolutely. Regi is especially valuable in domains where factual accuracy and up-to-date information are critical. For instance, banking compliance boards, Regi can fetch the latest regulatory documents and help answer compliance related queries grounded in real policies. Legal document QA ender. It retrieves clauses from contracts or case law and provides context aware answers. Healthcare summarization Regi can summarize long medical records or research papers while ensuring that facts are preserved. Cybersecurity knowledge base search. Analysts can use Regi to query threat intel databases and get responses backed by recent findings. Enterprise knowledge assistance. Regi allows internal assistants to pull from company manuals, wikis, and training documents to answer employee queries accurately. In all these cases, traditional LMs may hallucinate or lack the latest information, but RAG ensures grounded, contextually relevant responses. The next question is, which search technique should be used in RAG system? In retrieval augmented generation, how we search for relevant documents is critical for getting accurate answers. Let's look at the search techniques used in RAGA systems. First, we have dense retrieval. This uses embeddings. Basically, it turns text into numbers and finds similar meanings using something called cosine similarity. It's great at understanding the context, even if the exact words are different. Then comes sparse retrieval like TF, IDF, and BM25. These are old school but still useful. They match documents based on exact keywords. This is great when you need precision, like with code or legal text. Now many systems use hybrid retrieval, a smart mix of tense and sparse. This way you get both deep understanding and exact. Oh. Finally, there's fuzzy search. It helps when the user makes a typo or uses a slightly wrong word. This makes your RAGI system more forgiving and user-friendly. Together, these techniques make retrieval smarter, faster, and more accurate. What are some challenges with RAG? While RAG is powerful, it does come with a few key challenges. First is document quality. If your source documents are messy, outdated, or poorly written, the system might retrieve bad context, and that means poor answers. Second is latency. RAG systems do multiple things, convert, search, retrieve, and generate. If any part is slow, your user will feel the delay. Third, we have the chunking strategy. If you break documents into chunks that are too large or too small, you might lose important context or overwhelm the model with noise. And finally, there is the issue of embedding models. If the model generating embeddings doesn't understand your domain, like legal, medical, or finance, you will get poor matches. Fixing these issues is critical to make your RAG system fast, accurate, and reliable. Next question is how can you improve RAG performance? Here are a few proven tips. First, always use clean and well-structured documents. Split them into meaningful chunks, like by paragraph or section so the model gets useful context. Second, pick the right embedding model for your domain. If you are working in healthcare, use BioBird. For legal work, go with LegalBird. This helps the system understand your data better. Third, prompt engineering matters. Guide the model with clear instructions, so it focuses on retrieved content, not guesses. Fourth, maintain your vector database. Update it regularly if your documents change, and remove duplicates or outdated content. And finally, always ground your outputs. Make sure the model is responding based on real data, not hallucinating. Small improvements in each of these areas can dramatically boost your RAG system's performance. 
To wrap up, REC isn't just a buzzword, it's the backbone of modern grounded AI systems. Whether you're building intelligent search assistants, internal knowledge bots, or prepping for an AI interview, understanding REC gives you a serious edge. It helps you build solutions that are fast, flexible, and based on real data, not just model guesswork. So keep exploring, keep learning, and start thinking about where you can apply REC in your own AI projects. Thanks for watching, and if you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Tech World with Preet.